Yeah, it says meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. I see a box. Okay. Lanley, can we start? Yep, yeah, please. Good evening. On behalf of Classical Arts Society of Houston, I welcome the audience to a short 30 minute chat session with panelists from both the Trinity team and the Classical Arts Society board. First, we thank Madras players for bringing this beautiful, highly acclaimed play to us on a virtual screen. It seemed like we all had front row seats. I hope you all enjoyed this as I did, the many wonderful compositions of the Trinity in the context of the times they lived in. It is indeed commendable that the cast has famous singers who were great actors too. In addition, we, we were introduced to many young and upcoming artists. Now for the chat, we have from the Trinity team, play director, PC Ramakrishna from the Madras Players, well-known singers Vijay Shiva, who played Diksha Dev, Gayatri Venkatraghavan, who played the lovely Shama Shastri's wife, and Dr. Sundar, who played Saint Tyagaraja and S. Ram, our tour manager, who played the Sutradhara role. Today, he will coordinate the responses from the Trinity panelists. From the classical arts side, we have myself, Ranjana Narasimhan, Vice President, Classical Arts Society, Prabha Bhala, Founder, Director of Classical Arts Society, and Shilpa Saragopan. Hi, Shilpa a young musician, daughter of Nalini Saragopan, president of Classical Arts Society. Shilpa has been trained by Ravi Kiran. Shilpa played the role of Kamalam in the Diksha episode in Toronto and was to play that role for the USA tour, which unfortunately didn't happen. Audience, you may send your questions in the chat box. I will start with the first question about Madras Players. In the past, Madras Players productions were primarily based on Western themes, but in recent times changed to Indian themes and in English. Why this change? And as a follow-up to this, why do the characters speak grammatically chaste English, but with deliberate Indian accents? Yeah, thank you. Thank, yeah, thank you, Ranjana. Uh, engaging with the audience in today's uh, digital world is not only exciting, um, but provides a platform to get uh, insights from Rasika's point of view and interacting with the artists. So a big thank you to Classical Art Society. Uh, to Nalini, to Ranjana, to Narsiman and Prabha and the entire team of CAS for making it happen. It's a good question and uh, who better than the director to respond to this? Over to PC. Good morning, good evening and uh, thank you Ranjana for the first question. Thank you all in CAS for making this happen. Um, yes, you're right. Uh, we are 66 years old in Madras Players. We started with Western themes because those were the only plays that were available. We, over the last 30 years, we have switched consciously to Indian writing uh, in English, in original English, translation or adaptation. It is in this uh, process that uh, we have identified uh, over the last, say, five, six, ten years, plays like Komal Swaminathan, Tanir Tanir, R. Chodamani's plays, and now Trinity, uh, three short stories written by Sita Ravi, translated by Prabha Sri Devan, where, where we could make an amalgam of theater and music. Now, how they speak, to answer your question, the brief given to all actors doing Indian themes is to speak the English, but with a feel of the vernacular. Feel the vernacular, speak the English, so that people around who don't know the language can understand. But the, the feel of the vernacular is there, 
the uh, uh, play becomes clear. So that is the brief that we give. That is what we do as far as the language is concerned. Thank you. I can understand the feel. Yes. yes. Uh, Prabha, take it over. Your question now. Prabha, you're muted. Unmute. Uh, am I heard now? Yes. I'm unmuted. Well, this, uh, the presentation was excellent. And the one aspect of this presentation that uh, really interested me is that uh, of the Trinity, both uh, Tyagaraja and uh, Muthuswami Dikshitar were represented in person. But the story of Shyama Sastri was told through, the, uh, um, through his wife, Lalita. So I was just wondering if this was for the author, a literary device that they use just to make it uh, interesting. Or, um, and also it gave the opportunity to present uh, Lalita's personality as also a great devotee of uh, Kamakshi and also a great devotee of uh, Shama Sastri himself. So is there something more to add to this? Or what? What yeah, is? thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Baba. Yeah, it's a very interesting question. Um, I would answer by saying that it's a combination of both. Um, out of the three protagonists, uh, I think from a theatrical point of view, it gives a little break. You have two men and a woman and a woman. And more from a story perspective, uh, I would say it was a master stroke of uh, Sita Ravi mm -hmm. to have uh, introduced the character of Shama Shastri through the eyes of his wife as who, who rightly, as you said, was uh, a great devotee of Kamakshi herself and also a great admirer and devotee of her uh, Shama Shastri and talking about his uh, compositions. P possibly, uh, PC, could you, would you like to add to what I've said? Yes, it was a, a master stroke of Sita Ravi uh, to write a story as a stream of consciousness in Lalita's mind. And uh, with Shyama Shastri not being there except for the last moment, we, everything is about the, as a, the episode is about him. So it, this is the way uh, Sita Ravi conceived it. In fact, it was, I believe, she told us, it was the first story that she had written. The other two followed. So it was uh, important uh, for us to retain that flavor uh, and to project Lalita and through her and through her mind, uh, Shyama Shastri. So we use Lalita and her uh, 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 devotion to Kamakshi uh, to portray this. So it was pretty much Sita Ravi's uh, own creation, which we extended to theater. I really enjoyed that. Also, was um, Lalita herself a singer or is this, or is it is the coincidence that no, she's... Uh, Gayatri history, being, playing that role. History does not say very much about uh, Lalita, uh -huh. but uh, it was uh, natural for us to assume when we did the play that having uh, lived with her husband for so long, she was a singer. Yeah. In fact, there is a line in which she says, I am not a great artist. <laughs> but you know, we introduced that line to say that she was not a you know, concert singer or a composer, but she obviously had lived with him and uh, could sing well. So we used that device. Excellent. Now, uh, Shilpa, it's your turn. Um, but before you ask your question, I'm curious to know, to, to know something. What was your experience in theater with Madras players? And how did you prepare for the role? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, it was really great to just be part of this cultural moment where we really delve into understanding the Trinity's life and specifically in my role, Dikshitar's life, as well as his Kritis. And I think, you know, growing up in the U.S., it's, it's easy to forget about how these Kritis came into existence, the composers behind the writing and really honoring their life. So I really enjoyed playing the role of Kamalam, you know, the female disciple of Dikshitar. And, you know, we got to do the Toronto tour uh, stop, but hopefully one day we'll get to do the rest of the tour. Um, I also, you know, the honor of working with someone like PC Ramakrishna, sir, who has such a clear vision and was able to take this production 
from India and bring it here to the US, specifically like the attention to detail. For me, introducing the elements of theater, I really enjoyed working under his direction as well as you know, all of Ram Uncle's help and setting up everything logistically, um, as well as working with amazing musicians like Vijay Shivasar and Gayatri Venkataraghavan, Madam. Um, in addition to that, you know, it was really great to work with the youngsters from India, like Bharat, Aryamba, Abhi, and Vikram. And we all became such good friends, even after just having the opportunity to perform in a couple of places. So I can't imagine what that connection would be like after doing, you know, a full-fledged tour. Um, in terms of preparation, like doing all of these things remotely, even pre-pandemic, just getting all these pieces together and then meeting up in Toronto and putting everything together so seamlessly just with a couple of days was uh, a really unique experience. And I think lastly, just generally being able to dive deep into Carnatic music, something that we as youngsters have all been exposed to throughout our life, but understanding more context, the deeper levels that are there, I think really intrigues me. And one day when I go back to visit India, I would love to like check out those places like Tiruvarur or Mayuram and some of those places that we talk about. We're so proud of you, Shilpa, for doing this. Um, there is a question from the audience. Uh, Smita Krishna is the name of the person. Did the Trinity actually meet? Did the Trinity actually meet? Yes, um, uh, I would ask uh, PC to respond, but uh, from the way we were uh, told and uh, read about various uh, history about the 18th century, they lived together at the same time, they knew each other, and uh, yes, they have met. Uh, possibly, uh, Vijay Shivaji, would you like to add to this? Uh, uh, Vijay and uh, Gayatri in terms of whether the Trinity knew each other and whether they were uh, used to meet is the question. Yes, over now, to you Vijay. The Trinity have met not as a three but individually. Um, Tyagaraj has met Dikshida, Dikshida has met Shyama Sastri. Shyama Sastri has met, uh, was a good friend of Tyagaraja. Shyama Sastri, son Subaraya Sastri learned from Tyagaraja. And uh, Dikshidhar has often visited this disciple's place, Vadive, residing in the next tree, the Shama Sastri was residing. So they have met. Bhutta Swami Dikshidhar has heard Subarai Sastri sing and he has sung some songs. And similarly, Dikshidhar has gone to Jaraja's house in Triveya. So all these things have happened. But they were not called as a trinity then. The, the concept of a trinity came much later in the early 20th century. Even in Subrahma Diksha's book, Sampradaya in Sangeeta Pradeshini, where he mentions all these three composers, he does not mention them as trinity. Um, sorry, Shilpa, I jumped uh, your question. Now it's your turn, really. Yeah, no worries. Um, that's really interesting insight as well. So yeah, if I had a question to ask, it'd be, you know, how did the three main characters really prepare themselves to play such crucial roles, you know, both musically from memorizing so many lines and just preparing yourselves in general? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I would request uh, each of the three protagonists, starting with Gayatri and then uh, Dr. Sundar and then Vijay, in terms of... Uh, to share your own experience briefly in terms of getting into the character uh, and share your experience. Gayatri. Namaskarams to everyone. And uh, we are so, so <laughs> glad that we are able to meet all of you again, uh, at least virtually, because we've enjoyed hospitality from all of you at a very, very critical juncture. You've all extended your love and affection to us when we stayed there. At, you know, it was such difficult times. Everybody was scared. The pandemic had just broke out. So we are so glad that we are able to present this play to you at least virtually and meet all of you this way. Um, having said that, I, I would say that this is a big prayer from all of us in India I, for the entire world to get out of this pandemic and especially to help Bharat Mata at this juncture. 
as for trinity um i think uh, ben pc anna suggested that we should i should do the role of shyama sastri's wife her original name was not lalita sita ka has imagined her as lalita which is so beautiful because lalita is a term that a word uh, which has been used by shyama sastri in so many of his compositions so there must may, might have been some connection there sita ka has written the story so beautifully because as somebody else was saying why is it that it is through his wife's because it is very difficult to catch shyama sastri and make him talk about himself or make him um camera friendly and start making him uh, uh, sing before because he never did that he was always before uh, shyama sastri not that the other two trinity were not like that they were also immersed in god but they had their disciples through which you could bring this out they had you know the daughter through which she has so beautifully brought this out but shyama sastri per se was so immersed spiritually you can see that there are very few of his compositions compared to the other two trinity and therefore there must have been something very very spiritual about connect about him all the time which was perceivable only to somebody very close to him that's why i think sita ka thought of his wife she must have thought about how he must have done his puja and how the vibration must have struck the wife and how he sang during the puja how she absorbed all that and as a devoted wife such a beautiful character lalita's character is she has just absorbed all these qualities and tc ana when he explained uh, lalita to me the first thing he told me was she's very soft she's a very elevated soul very spiritually elevated soul so she is not somebody who would get angry or show the normal emotions that uh, general human um, nature shows so there were a few episodes where like for instance i would say why have you come when i spoke to dharmaka who played such a very interesting and important role in that uh, played by haimaka so beautifully so i would say why have you come and then he would say no no she can't talk like that so you have to tone it down so <laughs> just to get that why have you come why have you come you know little bit of uh, um what do you say uh, like Curious. little bit of irritation and but at the same time not irritated that that to get that all that i i should say that psi anna brought that all out from us so beautifully and even the tamasama that was his master stroke in himachala tane because she is always thinking about her husband and she is talking to kamakshi it was though so for me though it was very very difficult uh, to get into the skin of the role uh, as a play for me it was very easy because i was talking to kamakshi she it was uh, and he also the mother master stroke was he made sure that i did things i normally do at home so the setting up the puja or singing when i do the puja is probably and i always start a, start with the shloka and end up with a song at home so it was very nice it was it came naturally to me and uh, thanks to all seen such uh, great vidwans like vijayanna sundaranna all of them and the entire team i can't tell you we are a family absolutely and the way everybody gelled and um, uh, the way pc anna brought out this character from inside all of us and then he's made me live the role of lalita a little bit of it every day so i must um, really thank god for this beautiful opportunity to play lalita who such an elevated and wonderful soul who had immediate access to one of the greatest composers of our time one of the greatest spiritually elevated composers of our time uh, it thank was real fun being part of this thank you i thank hope you, i answered uh, your question yeah, yeah thank you, you definitely thank did thank you thank you gayatri um just to add one line to what gayatri said um you know towards the end of the uh, uh, shama shastri story it says uh, when did you come and shama shastri says when i heard you call me uh, the whole idea of this particular line uh, according to me was to give the feel that shama shastri says i have always been here only i didn't go anywhere i have been here throughout great uh, can i request dr sundar to pitch in to share your of course yeah dr yeah. sundar yeah first of all uh, namaskaram just a, just a request for all the participants if you're not speaking could you please mute your line yes yes namaskaram uh, this concept started when uh, you know i met pc sir at a, at a at a get together at that time it was a germ of an idea that 
I want to do something, uh, you know, about the, the musical trinity, and uh, I have a role for you in mind. That was the, this must have been about two, two and a half years ago. So I had my own, uh, you know, fears and doubts. Because uh, firstly, I have never been on stage as a, as an actor, maybe as a musician, but not as an actor. So that was my first, you know, concern. And then um, the second was, yes, I have a medical practice. So I had to juggle between, uh, you know, practicing medicine and uh, practicing for this. Of course, one thing that he was very clear is that he wanted only musicians and that they should sing live. There's no question of, you know, singing as lip sync or uh, later on adding it on or, or background. There will not be... For example, no mridangam, no violin. It's just you singing on stage. So this concept was explained much earlier and uh, really without knowing what I was getting into, I signed up. But then I think, I believe that one, there is an actor in all of us and it needs proper nurturing. That is very important. I mean, any of us can acquire these uh, skills as, uh, as defined, a skill is something which is an aptitude which is repeated and repeated till you, till you get it right. So um, that aspect I must mention here was brought out by PC sir because uh, beneath all that sophistication, beneath all that that uh, you know you know getting us into the role and those all. There's a very, very firm person. He just sees that you're on time. And there must have been several uh, practice sessions right through. Now, I remember very clearly, you know, the image of St. Tyagaraja was as of somebody who is, you know, uh, old and, and um, spiritual. And of course, we all have that image which should still be there. But... Um, you must all remember that Tyagaraja was a human being. So the, the main thing that I felt was that the demystification of these great personalities. They have also passed through life. And uh, when PC sir told me, listen, Tyagaraja was a father. He was a very affectionate father. He had a family. He was, of course, truly a devotee of Rama, em, you know, embedded in oh, Rama, all that stuff. But I wanted to bring that life into uh, Tyagaraja. He, is, he can be seen a little sprightly and all that. And then I told him, uh, oh my God, I have to dance on stage and sing at the, time, at the same time. How can I do that? He said, you try it out. And then, I mean, he was the one who gave all the encouragement, but I would put it down to the, the perfection that he expects from all his artists that, that we were able to, because otherwise... All of us are performers, yes. It's not that we are new to an audience. We have, we have, we have performed to an audience, but I had always this, this fear, you know. When I, when I do the namaskaram, my, my turban might fall off. <laughs> or when, 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 I, when performing, suddenly I would forget my lines. Or what is the cue? What would, what would happen if, if uh, uh, Arya uh, forgot her lines? What should I do? So these sort of fears were always there. And uh, I, I must thank God that, th that all these shows that we did live as well as uh, this one, we were blessed. We were indeed blessed that the thank things uh, went, went out the way they did. Thanks. So it's thank been a you, Doc. Thank, thank you very much, Doc. Uh, a few words from uh, Vijay Shiva, please. Um, yes, I've read the story when it was first published in Kalki, written by Srimati Sita Ravi. Those stories are still available in uh, the net and also the podcast of Srimati Sita Ravi reading the stories is also available. Maybe Mr. Ram can make it available to the Houston people. I read the stories and I was bewildered. It was extremely good. But I never thought it would be made out into a drama. I read it was published, the English translation was published in Hindu. I read that too. And then Mr. PC approached me to do this role. I did feel that I was a stranger to this role because I already read the stories one more, more than once. 
but i need to have a feel of the story so i went back and read the original story 10 years 10 years of 12 years later i got a feel of what putusami dikshit was or what what it grew up in but during the preparation for the role before going to the rehearsal i had to prepare myself on how to get expressions and how to walk so my advice three team my family and my advice team helped me in um uh, monitoring the facial expressions in the walk i try to imitate two people one is mohan guruji who resides in west mumbai used to reside in west mumbai the way he walked and he spoke to his disciples the other is bharati tirtha swamigal of shringeri i basically uh, thought of him how he would walk with a smile wearing a smile on his face and talking to his disciples very kind very very affectionate so this is what i try to imitate after i came to the rehearsal it was sri pc who guided me as to how to orient myself to english theater because i have done a couple of plays in tamil theater and i have been acting off and on not very regularly i can't be a regular actor so he oriented me to english theater where to stand how to look and from there the role got uh, got the character got molded and um, mr pc would always say give me more and i will try to cut off the unwanted <laughs> so that is the way he took us through the role this is what you should be doing this is what is not expected this is such a wonderful feeling working with him we felt so comfortable in fact after a point of time we were actually living those roles that's the way he um directed us thank you oh, yeah, yeah. thank you yes ranjana over to you yeah um there's one more question from uh, the audience was tyagaraja's daughter really a dancer or was it a theatrical strategy yeah i think uh, from what is available um not very sure whether she was a dancer but yes from uh, a theatrical point of view uh, it was added um it was not there in the original 90 minutes show that we did in chennai when we premiered the show uh, but when we uh, extended the show by 30 minutes to add additional musical content um pc came up with this brilliant idea uh, of making a dance for two reasons one is to to harness that potential in her because she is a dancer from the kalakshetra so and then he came up with this idea as to how do we have this song and dance when the tyagaraja sings the sita pati and how she could dance uh, a word a word or two on this uh, pc uh, yes uh, you've said it all uh, just wanted to introduce another dimension uh, of dance also uh, motivated by the fact that arya was such a beautiful dancer and it seemed uh, uh, such a a waste not to use that talent so it came in the in the shape of sita pate and she could do the thing and it sort of i in my opinion uh, embellished the scene and uh, gave a little variety uh, to the viewers uh, i i personally loved that scene a lot thank you thank you bc yes uh, shilpa um next i would like to ask you something um the houston audience did not uh, uh, see you or hear you so uh, as kamalam can you uh, sing a short piece for us maybe sure i can um so one of my favorite scenes is when all the disciples were sitting and talking about these various krithis uh, that their guru dikshit had wrote and how they were inspired by these divine inspirational moments you know through the zephyr the breeze and the wind so in that scene there was like one line uh, from each of these uh kriti so i can sing a couple of those so with the zephyr uh, there was cheta shri so was, mm, cheta shri bal krishnam Mm-hmm. And then we had Ambikaya, like 
ಅಂಬಿಕಾಯ ಅಭಯಾಂಬಿಕಾಯ ತವದ ಸೋಹಂ ಆದಿ ಜಗದಂಬಿಕಾಯ ಅಂಬಿಕಾಯ So those are a couple of the kritis and you know the best part about this is for for a student like me I was exposed to so many new kritis and got to learn uh had a great excuse to learn more and add them to my repertoire so it's a little beautiful. yeah <laughs> really beautiful shilpa uh, ram do you have any closing statements to make um yes uh, um what's the time uh, okay uh, before that ram i'd oh, like I, to say something uh, i'd yeah. like to say something yeah sure, yeah sure. one one thing that um, has not been covered uh, is the role of the sutradhara it's an old sanskrit play tradition uh, which is there in in in, in shudraka and mrichakatika and uh, even in our folk traditions like you know the katyakaran in uh, terukutu and things like that sita had not written uh, the sutra sutradhara role when we decided to link the plays together we wanted to find somebody who could travel the distance of the play and become part of the fabric and so the sutradhara was created uh, to link the stories one to the other seamlessly and that is how the sutradhara came in my opinion it is a very important link uh, which uh, which ram has uh, which is ram has performed that which made the stories go from one to the other to the other without a break with seamlessly and almost as if he knew all three so the sutradhara is a role that i must say that was created for the play he also kept all the players together most of the time <laughs> very nice um yes i uh, thank you all thank you uh, anjana you said uh, uh, a line or two um all i can say in uh, conclusion is that uh, there is no substitute for a live show uh, with a live audience where the uh, audience reacts to the uh, performers who in turn react to the audience uh, in a constant uh, cyclic interchange as it were uh, while actors feeding off from the audience energy happens in a live show all i can say is that we have tried our best to get it as close as possible to offer trinity in a virtual mode absolutely it came out very nice and uh, thank you all once again all audience and panelists for making this uh, interesting chat session um, we wish uh, india recovers from this pandemic and um, we get back to our old ways of uh, uh, real shows uh, thank you very much good night thank you thank you thank you once again